Hi, everyone. Welcome to Geekly EDU Biology. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the use of cloning for conservation. So can we bring life back from extinction? Shown in popular movies such as Jurassic Park, where we take DNA from extinct species and clone them into existing individuals today. And this may seem like something only shown in movies, but recently scientists cloned the first endangered species within the United States from a donor organism who's been dead for over 30 years. And the species which we are referring to here with this cloning is the black-footed ferret. And so this is a highly endangered species in the United States, and we think that only um, less than a thousand wild individuals are left. And this is a problem because when a species population size becomes too low, it becomes even more at risk of extinction, mainly because it loses its genetic diversity. So when a population size is very small, um, we say that that population's gene pool, which is the total amount of genes within the individuals in that species, um, becomes very small and it loses that genetic diversity. And then when that happens, it means that the species or the individuals left in that species are more likely to inbreed, so um, mate with related individuals. And when high amounts of inbreeding happens, this leads to this often the spread of harmful mutations, um, and then that will spread even quicker throughout a small population size, um, increasing the likelihood of extinction. And we call this process inbreeding depression. Now, there's multiple ways that we can try to save a species from inbreeding depression. And one of the ways we can do this is with uh, a tool that's called genetic rescue. And this is basically when humans actively try to restore a population's genetic diversity. A really great example of genetic rescue is with the Florida panther. And so the Florida panther um, lost a lot of its habitat due to um, land transformation. And so it had a very small population size um, in the late 1900s. And then this led to a loss of genetic diversity, which then led to the inbreeding depression that I talked about, um, where inbred males actually were infertile. So um, they couldn't produce viable offspring anymore, which would eventually lead to extinction. And so humans noticed this, and what we did was we took a closely related panther species, the Texan panther, um, and then actually moved a few individuals from Texas to Florida and just kind of dropped them in into the population in Florida. And they the panthers naturally bred. And now, due to this new um, genetic diversity that's in our gene pool, um, they were able to have um, hybrid kittens that were healthy compared to the inbred kittens um, that were naturally occurring in, in the population. So like the genetic rescue with the Florida panther, humans are now trying to perform genetic rescue on the black-footed ferret. But here, instead of introducing a closely related um, species, we're trying to restore the genetic diversity of the black-footed ferret by cloning. And so here we took the DNA from a previously living ferret, which exist existed, like I said, over 30 years ago, and with this DNA of the clone, we're hoping to bring back that genetic diversity that existed 30 years ago to increase um, the genetic diversity in the species. 
And the DNA from this um, previously living ferret actually came from what's called the frozen zoo, which is in the San Diego Zoo in California. And this is basically where we have DNA from multiple different types of species. And this DNA is stored in freezers, creating what is called a frozen zoo, which was created for precisely this purpose of potentially rescuing species from extinction. All right, so now I want to end off with three different types of cloning that you get. So the first type of cloning that we have currently is what's called gene cloning. So this is where we splice out a single gene within an organism's DNA, and then we insert it into what's called um, a plastid. So this is just a piece of circular DNA, and then we'll insert that gene into the plastid. Then we'll insert that plastid into a cell, and then that cell will grow into um, our organism with that cloned gene. And so this is really um, popular in genetically modified plants. Then we have what's called reproductive cloning. And this is the type of cloning that was used to create our cloned ferret that I just talked about. And so here we take DNA from a mature cell. So this is DNA from um, the frozen zoo, so from that donor ferret. And then we insert it into what's called an enucleated oocyte. So enucleated means um, the nucleus was taken out of the cell. And then an oocyte is an egg cell. So this is an egg um, that would then reproduce a, a baby. Um, so it's an egg cell in which the nucleus was um, taken out of. And then we put the DNA into that um, enucleated oocyte. And then that's transplanted into a surrogate, which then births your clone, which is a, a full organism, full cloned organism. Finally, we have therapeutic cloning, which is really similar to reproductive cloning. So we take our DNA of our cell that we want to clone and then put it into our enucleated oocyte. But then instead of inserting that into a surrogate to have a full cloned organism, it's rather used to create stem cells from which we only grow specific tissues or organs. That's it for today's video. I hope that you found it super interesting. And if you want to learn more about biological topics, please subscribe here.